Greetings, everybody. Chaplain Bob Walker here, Live the World Ministries. Yeah, it looks like Gab's another dead end. Spent three months loading hundreds of videos to Gab, and everybody keeps telling me they can't find me in the search results. So, yeah. I guess it's another another dead end. I don't know. I think all these people are work for the evil ones so they can uh, collect their names when the time comes for the purge. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see what happens. All righty. Well, this is going to be Book of Enoch and Chapter 9. Now, before we start, there are four archangels. Well, I'm, I'm assuming they're archangels because it mentions Michael and Gabriel. Michael fought Satan and the, uh, the dragon, you know, in Revelation 12. And then Gabriel announced to... John the Baptist's father and to Mary, if memory serves me correctly, about uh, her having Christ. Now, Uriel and Raphael are not mentioned, but uh, I don't know. You know, there's some weird things, but uh, I don't know. Take it with a grain of salt. I'm not saying I agree with it. I'm not saying I disagree with it. But uh, a couple people asked me to look into it. And honestly, i it's been since the 90s since I'd read this. So I don't know. Chapter 9. And then Michael, Uriel, Raphael, and Gabriel looked down from heaven and saw much blood being shed upon the earth and all lawlessness being wrought upon the earth. And they said one to another, The earth made without habitation, uh, without inhabitant, I'm sorry, the earth made without inhabitant cries the voice of their cryings up to the gates of heaven. And now to you, the holy ones of heaven, the souls of men make their suit, saying, you know, make their suit like a lawsuit. You know, make our cause. That's what they're talking about here. Make uh, make their suit saying, bring our cause before the more, most high. And they said to the Lord of the ages, Lord of lords, God of gods, King of kings, and God of the ages, the throne of thy mighty standeth unto all the generations of the ages. And thy name, holy and glorious and blessed unto all the ages. Thou hast made all things, and power over all things hast thou. And all things are naked and open in thy sight. And seest all things, and nothing can hide itself from thee. So thou seest what Aziel hath done. Uh, Aziel was one of those... Uh, angels that supposedly made the pact with the other angels to pollute the women kind so who hath taught all unrighteousness on earth and rever and revealed the eternal secrets which were preserved in heaven which men were striving to learn and some jaza to whom thou hast given authority to bear rule over his associates and they have gone to the daughters of men upon the earth and have slept with the women and have defiled themselves and revealed to them all kinds of sins. And the women have borne giants and the whole earth has thereby been filled with blood, you know, death, with blood and unrighteousness. And now behold, the souls of those who have died are crying and making their suit to the gates of heaven, and their lamentations have ascended, 
and cannot cease because of the lawless deeds which are wrought on the earth. And thou knowest all things before they come to pass, and thou seest these things, and thou dost suffer them, or allows them. And thou dost not say to us what we are to do to them in regard to these. Hmm. So evidently they want to, they want action. Then said the Most High, the Holy and Great One spake and sent Uriel to the son of Lamech and said to him, Go to Noah and tell him in my name, Hide thyself and reveal to him the end that is approaching, that the whole earth will be destroyed and a deluge, a deluge, deluge, flood, right, is about to come upon the whole earth and will destroy all that is on it. And now instruct him that he may escape and his seed may be preserved for all the generations of the world. Let's pause right here. All right, let's take a look at uh, Genesis chapter 6. Uh, verse 7. So, you know, here it is. You got the um, sons of God marrying the women. And giants are being born. And then verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. So evidently, God made some kind of a deal with the devil or Satan, but probably before uh, Satan fell, that uh, the earth was going to be his domain for administration you know he's you know i want you to be the um the property manager here of the earth you know that's what i'm guessing all right so the lord said i will destroy man whom i have created from the face of the earth both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air for it repenteth me that i have made them but noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. And I don't know how many New Testament teachers or whatever has said, oh, there's there's no grace in the Old Testament. It's all law. Law and judgment. Well, right here in Genesis chapter 6, but Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. All right, these are the generations, or children, these are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Why would the Bible say that? Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. He was perfect in his bloodline. You know, people... Why would why would the Bible say this if the other generations, the bloodlines, were not polluted? Why would the Bible say this? Yeah. And if you look at the first four letters of generations, it's the word gene, as in genetics and DNA. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh, all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Huh. How can flesh corrupt his way? S satanic seed line. I, you know, it's just, it makes perfect sense when you, when you look at it this way. But, uh, you know, they don't, the, the satanic sea line, they hide this information. They do not want you to know 
but there's a satanic seed line on this earth that has absolutely no offer of salvation whatsoever. You know? Uh, all right, so let's go back to 9, chapter 9 of Enoch. Um, thou seest what Aziel hath done, who hath taught all right unrighteousness on earth and revealed the eternal secrets which are were preserved in heaven, which men were striving to learn, and Semjaza, to whom thou hast given authority to bear rule over his associates, and have gone to the daughters of men upon the earth, and have slept with the women, and have defiled themselves, and revealed to them all kinds of sins. And the women have borne giants, and the whole earth has thereby been filled with blood and unrighteousness. And now, behold, the souls of those who have died are crying and making their suit to the gates of heaven, and their lamentations have ascended and cannot cease because of the lawless deeds which are wrought upon the earth. And thou knowest all things, they come to pass. Thou seest these things, and thou dost suffer them, and thou dost not say to us, what we are to do to them in regard to these. So, and then in 10, it says, Then said the Most High, the Holy and Great One spake, and sent Uriel to the son of Lamech, and said to him, Go to Noah, and tell him in thy name, Hide thyself, and reveal to him the end that is approaching, that the whole earth will be destroyed, and a deluge is about to come upon the whole earth, and will destroy all that is on it. And now instruct him that he may escape and his seed, his children, may be preserved for all the generations of the world. And again, the Lord said to Raphael, bind Aziel hand and foot and cast him into the darkness and make an opening in the desert, which is in Dudiel and cast him therein and place upon him rough and jagged rocks and cover him with darkness and let him abide there forever and cover his face that he may not see light and on the day of the great judgment he shall be cast into the fire woo is there something along this lines that uh, covers this in jude well let's take a look in the book of Jude, chapter 1, verse 6, And the angels, which kept not their first estate, but left their own habitation, he hath reserved in everlasting chains unto, under darkness unto the judgment of the great day. That's the lake of fire, people. Back to Enoch 10. And on the day of the great judgment, he shall be cast into the fire and heal the earth, which the angels have corrupted and proclaim the healings of the earth, that they may heal the plague and that all the children of men may not perish through the secret things that the watchers have disclosed and have taught their sons. And the whole earth has been corrupted through the works that were taught by Aziel to him ascribe all sin. And to Gabriel said the Lord, Proceed against the bastards and the reprobates, and against the children of fornication, and destroy the children of fornication and the children of the watchers from amongst men, and cause them to go forth. Now, if you look in the word um, bastard in the King James Bible, in the Hebrew, it uh, it actually means mixed mongrel. And people will say, oh, well, uh, that's, it's not the baby's fault that the mother and father were not married. Uh, that's the modern thing. I mean, just like 100 years ago, to be gay meant that you were happy. And today, gay means you're a, well, you know what I mean. LB and then the GT yeah 
In Zechariah 9, 6, it says, And a bastard shall dwell in Ashdod, and I will cut off the pride of the Philistines. Now, the Philistines were the giants. Goliath was a Philistine. So here it is. The Bible's talking about a bastard and the Philistines. Deuteronomy 23, verse 2. A bastard shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to his tenth generation shall he not, shall he not enter into the congregation of the Lord. So even to his tenth generation, they're not allowed. Of course, your modern demon nominational churches will say, well, yeah, 10 generations, they can't. But then in the 11th generation, God's going to let them in. He's going to open the door. Say, come on in, bastard. Uh, no. The word bastard here in the Hebrew is mixed mongrel. As in fallen angel stuff. Yeah. So, let's go back to uh, Enoch. And Gabriel said to the Lord, Proceed against the bastards and the reprobates, and against the children of fornication, and destroy the children of fornication and the children of the watchers from among men, and cause them to go forth. Send them one against the other, that they may destroy each other in battle. For length of days shall they not have, and no request that they, i.e. their fathers, make of thee shall be granted unto their fathers on their behalf. For they hope to live an eternal life, and that each one of them will live 500 years. And the Lord said unto Michael, Go bind Semjaza and his associates who have united themselves with women, so as to have defiled themselves with them in all their uncleanness. And when their sons shave, uh, when their sons have slain one another, and they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast for 70 generations in the valleys of the earth till the day of their judgment and of their consummation till the judgments that is forever and ever is consummated in those days they shall be led off to the abyss of fire and to the torment and the prison in which they shall be confined forever and whosoever shall be condemned and destroyed will from thenceforth be bound together with them to the end of all generations and destroy all the spirits of the reprobate and the children of the watchers, because they have wronged mankind. Destroy all wrong from the face of the earth, and let every evil work come to an end, and let the plant of righteousness and truth appear, and it shall prove a blessing. The works of righteousness and truth shall be planted in truth and joy forevermore. And then shall all the righteous escape, and shall live till they begat thousands of children. And all the days of their youth and their old age shall they complete in peace. And then shall the whole earth be filled in righteousness, and shall all be planted with trees, and be full of blessings, and all desirable trees shall be planted on it. And they shall plant vines on it, and the vine which they plant thereon shall yield wine in abundance and as for all the seed which is sown thereon each measure of it shall bear a thousand and each measure of olive shall yield ten presses of oil and cleanse thou the earth from all oppression and from all unrighteousness and from all sin and from all godlessness and all the uncleanness that is wrought upon the earth destroy from off the earth and all the children of men shall become righteous, and all nations shall offer adoration, and shall praise me, and all shall worship me. And the earth shall be clean, cleansed from all defilement, and from all sin, and from all punishment, and from all torment. And I will never again send them upon it from generation to generation forever. Hmm. So, that is the conclusion of Enoch chapters 9 and 10. And I think I am going to close it out here. So, all blessings, praise, glory, and honor in Jesus' name. Amen.